If subnetting is the process of lengthening the mask to create multiple smaller subnets from a single larger network, route summarization can be described as shortening the mask to include several smaller networks into one larger network address. As the network grows large, the number of individual networks listed in the IP route table becomes too big for the routers to handle effectively. They get slower, drop packets, and even crash. This, of course, is an undesirable state of affairs. With more than 160,000 routes at the time of this writing known to major internet routers, some way to reduce the number of entries is not only desirable, but also critical. In the previous VLSM example, all the subnets for the branches and the WAN links were created from the 192.168.0.0 slash 24 class C network. If we take that diagram and put it into context, we can see how route summarization can reduce the number of entries in the route table. The central office router can either send a routing update with all the subnets it knows about listed individually, or it can send a single line in the update that essentially says, send anything that starts with 192.168.0 to me. Both methods work. The issue is one of scalability. No router will ever collapse under the load of advertising six subnets, but make it 6,000 subnets, and it makes a huge difference in performance if you summarize as much as possible. Route summarization takes a set of contiguous networks or subnets and groups them together using a shorter subnet mask. The advantages of summarization are that it reduces the number of entries in the route table, which reduces load on the router and the network overhead, and hides the instability in the system behind the summary, which remains valid even if a summarized network is unavailable. It is important to follow a few rules and guidelines when summarizing. Serious routing problems will happen otherwise, such as routers advertising networks inaccurately and possibly duplicating other routers' advertisements, suboptimal or even totally incorrect routing, and severe data loss. The first rule is to design your networks with summarization in mind, even if you don't need it yet. This means that you will group contiguous subnets together behind the router that will summarize them. You do not want to have some subnets from a summarized group behind some other router. The summary is essentially saying, I can reach the networks represented by this summary. Send any traffic for them through me. If one or more of the networks behind the summarizing router is unavailable, traffic will be dropped, but not the summarizing router, because the summary is still valid. The packet will get routed to the router that connects to the dead network and dropped there. Advanced planning, including making plenty of room for future growth, will give you a solid, scalable network design that readily lends itself to summarizing. This figure shows a badly designed network that will be almost impossible to summarize because the subnets are discontiguous, with individual subnets scattered all over the system. The second rule is to summarize into the core of your network. The core is where the bigger, faster, busier routers are, like the central office router in the previous example. These routers have the job of dealing with high volumes of traffic headed for all different areas of the network so we do not want to burden them with big, highly detailed route tables. The further you get from the core, the more detail the routers need to get traffic to the correct destination network. It's much like using a map to drive to a friend's house. You don't need a great deal of detail when you're on the highway, but when you get into the residential areas, you need to know very precise information if you have a hope of finding the place.